Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Colossians 3, 5. You may only be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store or even local Christian radio station? One of our shows, Words of Life, is a weekly 15-minute show featuring powerful interviews and testimonies. So I sometimes call him my, yeah, my angel because I just feel like the Lord put him in my life in the perfect time. When I think Engaging about- conversations about topics impacting the church today. About it. And that really gets back to this fundamental question within Christian ethics. What does it mean to be made in the image of God? And I think that's one of the most important questions we can And get. deep dives into Scripture. This divine appropriation of the Holy Spirit that God now dwells in the believer. That not only do Listen to Words of Life on your favorite podcast store or visit SalvationArmyRadio.org to learn about more shows produced by the Salvation Army. Border Battle, the new six-part documentary series, puts you on the front line of America's southern border and rise of the deadly drug fentanyl. The overdose death crisis in this country is directly linked to Cartel Jalisco New Generation and the Sinaloa Cartel and their labs. Fentanyl is 50 times more powerful than heroin. Three grains of fentanyl would kill you. Tens of thousands of Americans have died. And our southern border is a drug cartel war zone. Now they have sophisticated weapons, tanks. They're dropping explosives on their competitors right by the border. We've never seen this before in the history of the country. Border Battle shows a border crisis like never before with exclusive footage exposing the consequences of illegal immigration, drug trafficking, and decades of government neglect. This will get worse before it gets better. Watch Border Battle from Turning Point USA. Download this shocking six-part series now at SalemNow.com. That's SalemNow.com. SalemNow.com. Today's Bible verse is Colossians 3, 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Does today's verse confuse you? I mean, we know we're not to live in sin. God wants us to keep our hearts and ourselves pure, to cultivate an attitude of contentment and a lifestyle of generosity, to gain control over our more base urges, whether that's the desire to use another person for our own pleasure or to numb sorrow or grief through compulsive shopping or overeating. But are these behaviors truly idolatry? According to today's verse, yes. Or more specifically, they are the result or product of worshiping one idol in particular, the idol of self. When we read passages that warn us against greed and other sinful and selfish desires, we can easily view them as a list of burdensome rules created by the ultimate rule maker, forgetting that they arise from a God of love, the one who does everything out of love. Love lays at the root of God's command. Love and a driving desire for increased intimacy with you and I, and to see us experience the full peace, joy, and freedom that Christ died to give us. As I share in Holy Love's Unshakable, Unbreakable Joy Bible Study, which you can download for free from the Holy Love website, and that's Holy Loved is in W-H-O-L-L-Y. But as I share in that Bible study, idols are whatever you and I pursue more than God. What we turn to for security, fulfillment, or what we place our identity in. Though those things like our career, like a particular role or relationship or the house or the car that we own, though they promise us life, they ultimately steal true life from us and leave us in bondage when we seek those things above Jesus Christ. When we hold tight to those things above Jesus Christ, when we seek our identity, our comfort, our courage, our security in those things and not Jesus Christ. Jonah 2 verse 8 states, and this is the New American Standard Bible, those who are followers of worthless idols abandon 
their faithfulness. The New English translation phrases it this way. Those who worship worthless idols forfeit the mercy that could be theirs. Or, in the English Standard Version, forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I find the contrast painted in the New International Version particularly striking. It states, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. That person clings to one, the worthless and insufficient item or person or ideal, and therefore turns away from the other, the perfect and constant love of God. Because here's the thing. If we don't choose God above all, we will follow or pursue whatever feels best in the moment. We become the double-minded Christians the author of James chapter 1 speaks about. People with one foot planted in faith and seeking after God and his guidance, and the other planted in the world, which basically means anything apart from God's will for us. And this is akin to that friend who appears to come to you for advice, but who is really hoping you would tell them what they wanted to hear. And if you don't, they reject your wisdom in lieu of theirs. According to scripture, those who seek God's wisdom in the same way, like only wanting to hear what they agree with, they become unstable. And this is because they sift God's words through their faulty, ever-changing opinion and perception. And I would suggest because of idolatry, because God doesn't truly have their heart. Therefore, they don't give his voice the authority it deserves. They, in essence, make their voice often ruled by emotion, cultural influences, or someone else's opinion. They make their voice speak louder. What's more, because God is always, always leading us towards increased joy, peace, and freedom, the beyond our expectations and filled to overflowing life, Jesus promised in John 10, verse 10, we ultimately forfeit those things as well, and we head steadily and progressively towards increased dysfunction and death. In Exodus 34, verse 14, written initially to the ancient Israels who were just coming out of slavery and from a culture of pervasive idolatry, we read, Do not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Now, upon reading this verse, some people immediately think of that jealous friend from high school who felt threatened by any other relationship, who turned possessive and sought to control them. Can I paint a different picture? Using the analogy of marriage, an analogy God himself uses throughout scripture to illustrate the depth of relationship he desires with you and I. Healthy marriages are built on fidelity, where the husband and wife give their hearts to one another. They promise to remain faithful. They become one in mind, soul, and body. They become one with one another and with no one else. This foundation of mutual commitment and trust it allows an intimacy between them so deep and fulfilling, so joyful. Scripture uses that relationship to reveal the mysterious and eternal union between Christ and you and I, his followers. In the Old Testament, God frequently compared idolatry to adultery. Considering this analogy, what happens when a husband or wife cheats on their spouse? That trust and with it, their intimacy is shattered. Their attention is divided. If they continue in the affair, they begin to turn to their lover for intimacy and fulfillment rather than their spouse. When we engage in idolatry, placing our comfort, our security, our sense of identity in anything other than Christ, we begin to behave in a similar way. We forfeit the love, the comfort, the strength, the perfect wisdom we would have received had we sought God first instead. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't receive fulfillment from our current roles, from owning nice or entertaining things, from achievement or the relationships that God allows. It does mean, however, to always remember who deserves to sit on the thrones of our hearts and who we need to sit in that place in order to thrive, and that's Jesus Christ. It also means guarding our hearts against those things like lust and greed that threaten to pull us away from the lover and creator of our souls, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Always remembering the death and decay Christ is calling us from and the life and vibrancy that he's calling us to. 
Can I encourage you to spend some time in prayer this week, asking God to show you who or what you've allowed to take his rightful place in your heart, the lies fueling your idolatry, and to deepen your trust in him? Because the more we know and trust him, the more we pursue him above all else. Let's pray. Holy Father, we love you and we praise you. We are so thankful for your love, for your commands, which reveal your love and call us to live in love. Lord, remove anything within us that deceives us into thinking that your commands are anything but loving. Remove those lies that would drive us from your protective and gracious care and fill us with your truth. Lord, help us to take time to really analyze our hearts prayerfully, to contemplate places where we have placed other things on the throne of our hearts instead of you and your Son and the Holy Spirit. Purify our hearts from everything that gets in your way, from everything that holds us back, from everything that enslaves us. Search us deeply, Lord. Shine your light into every crevice of our soul. Help us, give us the strength and the courage to cooperate with you, to yield to you as you begin to uproot those things that lead to decay, that lead to slavery, so that you can draw us progressively towards increased peace and joy and freedom in you. It is in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hey everybody, Charlie Kirk here. The southern border is wide open and we have to tell the world about it. Our team at Turning Point USA has been working over the last year to have a -a one-of-a-kind documentary all about the drugs, the guns, the crime, the criminals that are flowing across the southern border. Our team at Turning Point USA has been working so hard on this through amazing frontline footage that shows the Border Patrol agents, shows people crossing the border, the illegal drug trade, the economic and societal fallout that illegal immigration has on the United States, Every single state is a border state. And we here being headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona, want the rest of the country, want you all across America to see what we are living through in Arizona. It's a one of a kind docuseries available exclusively on SalemNow.com. That is SalemNow.com. You guys will see the poorest southern border wide open and what we can do to solve it. If you want to learn about the border, this is your opportunity. Brought to you by Turning Point USA, available at SalemNow.com.